This is my day job, a British sweet shop, or candy shop to the rest of the world. I begrudgingly serve customers behind this sweet shop counter, uh, but when I'm not serving customers, I tend to look around the shelves at the many, many sweets or candy and think, there is a lot of plastic on those shelves. Just how much plastic waste is there? in children's sweets these days. And then it got me thinking, maybe I should do something about it. Hello, welcome to Dandar's episode six. Uh, I've set myself a challenge today, doing something different, not the usual sculpting. i um, going to scratch build, and uh, I'm, I'm using only the items I found in the sweet shop. I won't be using anything else, apart from one little bit later on. Two little bits later on, but uh, you'll see what that is. That, that should be fine. You should be fine with that, I think. But aside from that, the scratch building element of this is made entirely from the plastic packaging that otherwise would have been chucked in the bin. So enjoy the video. Right, so this is my bag of goodies. Uh, I have scratch built before several times. I'm not as proficient as, uh, as other crafters are, but uh, looking at this pile, it seems like a lot, but uh, I know for a fact that um, I'm going to struggle when it comes to certain things. But uh, we'll, we'll give it a, a good try. Uh, but first we'll do a, a fancy edit. When crafting videos go horribly wrong. Tonight's first guest is Dan, an amateur YouTube crafter, but a professional moron. <clears throat> well, it's my uh, sixth episode and I thought I'll try and uh, match the big boys. You know, I'll do like a big reveal of all the pieces I'm using and then, you know, do a, a gradual, you know, one of those things like all the big boys do and uh, got almost to the end and uh, and the light the um, the light fell onto the onto the desk and uh, fucked it up <laughs> uh, what have I learned? Don't dream. Never dream. Coming up next, we got Tinu from Craftastrophy, soiling himself on film. This is uh, the pile of crap that would uh, have otherwise been chucked into the sea after the children had had their fill of sweets. And uh, what happened to the sweets? Well, those that didn't dissolve i.e. lollies, uh, are in this jar. That will be tossed into the face of the first trick-or-treater I see. Uh. So I begin with a Star Wars surprise egg and the dome from a gumball machine to make the uh, bulk of uh, the creation, which is going to be a robot. Spoilers. Uh, this will be the body, the chassis. Uh, gave the pieces a good sanding just then, which I will do for every piece in this build because nothing adheres to plastic. Not this kind of plastic anyway. It's horrible stuff. And it will be the end of us. Oh, better get rid of that. Rebel scum. The next piece here is a pog 
a Star Wars pog that was inside the Star Wars surprise egg. Surprise! And using my magic archive, I magic the center of this pog out of existence. I stuck the pog on the top of the chassis and uh, using super glue and bicarbonate of soda or baking soda, which I'll use for most of this project, to help the super glue set and have a stronger hold. This is the ball thing on the top of a. Uh, one of those liquid sweets. I think it's a Vimto liquid rollerball thing. Um, I used it under my armpits originally. I wasn't sure what it was for. But I've cut that in half with the hobby saw to use as hip joints. Next up, we've got these two orange pieces that are from uh, a sweet that is a lolly encased in plastic called a flick and lick. <coughs> flick and lick. I use a metal beak to trim some edges so they would fit snugly onto the hip joints and thank god for these pieces to be honest because I would have struggled massively. This is the spray nozzle from a Vimto triple spray, there are three of them and uh, when you take it apart there's lots of little pieces inside there, it's, it's a lovely surprise and I use the, the caps for the, uh, the knee joints. The other parts of the flick and licks will be the shins of the robot. This flick and lick was a was a godsend. I would have it would have been impossible to make legs otherwise. Now, while the robot had a little dance, I gathered a few pieces, random pieces, some rods, and bits of the spray nozzles and. Uh, added these rods on the back of the legs to give it some realism along with some uh, bolty rivety type things on the joints. Using these horror shears I cut through uh, one of the plastic bottles and uh, make embellishment on the hip there just to hide the horrible mess of super glue and baking soda to be honest. These are Pez carcasses that are perfect for feet. It's just a shame about all the Pez logos and things but uh, we'll cover those up later on. I'm, I'm not advertising Pez here any more than I need to. Just have a little vacuum clean there, gotta, gotta keep your worktop clean. And for the record this scratch build project absolutely destroyed my cutting mat. God damn it. Art shift time again and I'm using this to scrape away any kind of serial numbers. We don't want anything being traced back to us. Uh, I'll be honest with you all because I feel like we know each other a little better now. I didn't really know what I was doing at this point. I just figured that if I'd stick things together, something would leap out at me. And uh, thank God it did, but you, you really got to have faith. This plastic chain is from a nunchuck thing. One side of the nunchuck is share, but one side is a lolly. And thank God for it, because I use it for embellishments and for something else later on. It's uh, one of the more interesting pieces that I knew I'd want to use for this project. And on the other hand, I, I grabbed this water pistol that has bubble gums in it and only used the nozzle for the, for the shoulder joint. I thought I'd use it more, but apparently I didn't. There, there are a lot of pieces I didn't use. You'll find out at the end. Here's another pile of bits for embellishments. I didn't film every single piece. I imagine you're all busy people. I mean, I'm busy, but I'm busy doing this. I use lollipop sticks mainly for the for the arms, the bones of the arm, and then as elbow joints are these little twisty nozzly bits from the gumball machines. A lot of super glue was used here. I do recommend wearing a respirator and having a window open. Uh, when cutting lollipop sticks, the best way to do it, I found, was to roll the stick under the blade, like you're rolling some kind of pastry with a blade and the pastry is made out of acrylic. This white piece here is the innards of the Pez. Very flimsy bit of plastic but I use this to cut a blade shape out because making a hand would have been nigh on impossible. So I made a blade instead. When in doubt, if you cannot make a hand, make a blade. It's a good rule in life. I need to make a little notch in the wrist joint here with the hobby saw. Cut that, stick the blade in, bit of super glue. Um, I reinforced the blade with this little random piece. I think that's from the sports flicker game thing. That's also a lolly. You'll see more of that later on. Added a few more details on the left shoulder, I suppose. Still, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what I'm doing with this part. 
at this point in the video. I mean, I know now, because I'm from the future, but not then. I was winging it. Uh, it's time to use the rest of that chain. And uh, I thought I'd try something here. A little experiment. The chain's reasonably light. It's cheap plastic. I thought I'd soak the thing in super glue and a bit of baking soda. And hopefully it will hold its position. Because I want it to be in a dynamic arc. As if it's being swung. Uh, but inevitably it, it, it didn't... It didn't... It didn't f work. There you, hello, Mr. Beep. How are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to hear your tone. Uh, so I, I've attached the chain to the left shoulder thing, and uh, I'm going to add a ball to the bottom. A ball. Did you pick up on that, Mr. Beep? I mean, you were wrong too, but uh, it's nice to have you here. The green ball is from one of those sour liquidy things, same as the Vimto thing, that look like underarm deodorants, the rollerball things. can't quite remember what it's called. But it's quite popular, actually. A little bit of Sweet Shop Insider info for you. I'm adding blades, uh, shards of metal to the ball to make a kind of morning star mace type thing. This red bottle is part of the nunchucks. Uh, I don't know if it was the sherbet side or the lolly side, but I'm going to use these scissors to cut panels out of this. It's very handy. And then I'm going to use the scissors to stamp the hell out of it to make it look beaten up. I've applied these panels all over the, the robot and uh, I was desperate to use rhinestones as bolts for this. But I thought, no, I'm only going to use the sweet shop paraphernalia that I have at hand. I've added some more shards to its back to make it look even more mean, and uh, that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna prime this thing. But before you see the the, the wonderful result after priming, uh, I have a, a brief message to play you. I'd just like to take a moment to thank all of you lovely patrons: Ed Trotz, Gemma Ingram, Dick Langfeed, Pearl Barkley. Shy Tog! And I'd also like to thank the Slod, Andy Scott, Anthony Roberts, Benedict Mueller, Cather Grad, Chris Gilead, Demon Mittenhands, Good Governance from Dark Metal Workshop, Carl Deheen, Krista, Larry, Mike Pitt, the Raiders of Lard, Positive Papid, Rich Miles, Stuart Ashen, Ashens, I'd also like to thank the Slot. Thank you very much, patrons. And if you would like to join Patreon, please do consider supporting the channel. The link is in the info. Oh, this is the moment it pays off. When you do that first initial prime, ask any scratch builder out there, and this is this is that. Mwah. This is the moment when all those horrible gaudy colours come together in one shade and you can actually see a product and not the numerous horrible looking sweet packets that we use to make this thing. Uh, for, I'm going to give this a coat of a very cheap uh, brown acrylic paint uh, to give it a, an undercoat of a rust colour. Those that watch Bill making stuff will be familiar with this uh, metallic painting technique. The next layer is gun metal, which is the, the most badass silver colour there is. It's got gun in its name. Next, uh, the Vallejo Rust Effect Wash. It's a great wash, this. I like this very much. Slather it on all over the thing. Uh, but I do dab a little bit off with an out of focus sponge. It's a makeup sponge from the Poundland. Oh, this is great fun, this is. I mean, look at that, that's lovely. That's tangible, tangible industrial metal, that is. Goblin Green next, Goblin Green from the Vallejo range. Gonna paint this as if it, it is a painted uh, machine, but paint all over apart from the edges and leave occasional spots clear just to give it like a chipped paint look. 
What do you get if two citrus fruit give birth to a child that goes on to college and then university? That's right, a bright orange. I'm going to use this bright orange to do uh, just little touches of rust. I'm going to use this sponge that I've torn off a larger sponge and just uh, dab very lightly. Like an elderly person doing a famous TikTok dance, dab lightly. It is easy to get carried away with this step and do too much. I'm going to say I didn't, but I probably did. Oil paint washes are all the rage uh, in the crafting sphere of YouTube, and, and uh, this channel is no different. I'm going to do a black oil wash over the entire thing using black oil paint and uh, this white spirit. Bella brand. That's a bit sexist. Using a plastic shop glass from the pound land. Get a pack of 20 of those, they're always handy. I use them all the time, never for shots, because uh, drinking shots alone is quite depressing and expensive. Slap that black wash all over the thing. I'm not sure if the consistency is quite right, but you can, you can wipe it and add more and pretty much do what you like with the oil wash. That's the great thing about it. Um, I also use another makeup sponge to dab it off and then wait a few hours for it to dry fully. And even after a few hours, if you use a little bit of white spirit, you can wipe away some of that black wash if it's too strong in places. Next, I've got Plata Silver, silver paint from Vallejo. I'm going to use this just to caress the edges of the, the sharp edges of the blades and other highlights of the metal. Not too much, the, this is just the area that gets the most use and is worn away the most, so it's fresh metal. Now, I'm sure there's more than one of you watching this video thinking, yeah, the robot's looking all right, Dan, but where's its bloody head? Well, it did occur to me too. But seriously, I've, uh, this plastic dome that I've got here was from uh, the football lollipop game thing. There was a dome on it and that was originally the inspiration for this. So I'm going to use this dome as a head, but I need a head inside the dome. I did a little thing for my patrons. I do have a patron by the way if you'd like to support and help out. Uh, I gave them four heads to... Uh, I forget the thing on the other page, the thing that's blurred out. It's not testicles or anything. It's just uh, an upcoming project and I don't want to spoil it. But anyway, I gave them four heads to choose from that I, I had designed and uh, well you, you'll see which one they chose when I make it uh, but uh, th this whole project has been made out of sweet products up until this point I, I am predominantly a sculpting channel and I'm going to sculpt this head I do hope you don't feel cheated <clears throat> I can only apologize firstly using the transparent Fimo I'm going to make some teeth. I feel like I'm always making teeth. Now, I, I left the house the other day, believe it or not. I don't do that often. And I went to a, a local art shop, which is usually overpriced, but I, I, I feel like I need to buy something when I go in there. And I found this translucent red clay, and I thought I'd give this a go, because it's a good colour for gums. Using some Super Sculpey Bacon Bond, I'm dipping the baked teeth into the uh, Super Sculpey Bacon Bond, and pressing them into the gums to get a realistic gum shape. It's that time of the episode where we gather all of the spare teeth we have and make an offering to the tooth god, Molar. Uh, take out your tooth chest, chuck the teeth in there and hope that he is appeased. You will know that Molar is unsatisfied if you are suddenly struck with gingivitis. Or it could just be that you're not brushing your teeth enough, but we can't be too safe. Using my old friend Cosclay, I'm going to start building up the head around these gnashes. Just pad it out, leaving some of the gum exposed, and then roll a big old long sausage. 
to act as a lip all the way around the uh, the mouth or the maw, depending on how pretentious you want to be. Smaller sausages now for creases and then a couple of lumps on each side of its head and then all the way around the back. I mean, you could probably tell which of the four choices has been chosen here. And yes, it was the one that was the most technically difficult to make. Thank you very much, patrons. Seriously, thank you very much, patrons. Ah, uh, yes, here I am pretending that I have to peruse my fancy looking shelf when in fact I just want to show off my fancy looking shelf as I select cabochons. Cabochons. What are cabochons you ask? Well they are tiny glass half bead things and they are great. I'm going to be using these for eyes. Which colour yellow is the most depressing at the end of a party? That's right, deep yellow. I'm going to be painting the back, the flat sides of the cabochons yellow. And once they are fully dry, press those into the, the unbaked clay. All over the place. Now you may be worried that how are you going to bake this thing if there's acrylic paint on it? Well, you can bake acrylic paint if it's not too hot. And luckily the clay doesn't need to be too hot to bake. So it's absolutely fine. This is the head. Pretty much finished. Off camera I secretly made a tongue. Uh, because num the option number four in my sketchbook had a tongue so I had to do it and uh, now it needs to be painted first with a base coat of blue violet and uh, then I'm gonna touch it up with a bit of old rose blue violet and old rose do you remember them two used to be playing bingo all the time they're always sitting in the corner of the pub where are they now I mean, blue violet was a bit of a downer, but old Rose still had life in her. Gold place. After a touch of sepia shade wash on the teeth, it's ready to go in the dome. So, uh, well, make sure it fits. It does, thank God. The dome is not the end of it, because I want to, uh, first of all, spin it. Then I want to seal off the bottom, and I'm going to use some... Uh, chipboard as you Americans call it I think uh, but we call it cardboard I'm going to use that to cut a circle to fit snugly on the bottom and uh, once that's painted black and the head is attached via super glue I'm going to attach the dome also with super glue and then drill a hole in the top I got a little bit ahead of myself there with the voiceover so I'm going to take this opportunity to say hey why not Click like if you like the video, or better still, subscribe. As I'm a relatively new channel, I appreciate every one of you. Uh, not like these big channels, am I right? <clears throat> but if you are a big channel, then please do 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 feel free to uh, to to share this, <laughs> to support me and help me out. Thank you very much, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Bye. God, I hope everybody knows I'm joking. On to UV resin. I love a bit of UV resin me, although, uh, I'll be honest with you, this next step was an absolute nightmare. I want to uh, mix a little bit of red wash with this, just to uh, make it a nice shade of pink, and then pour it into the top of the dome and fill the dome with resin. But, there were some issues with this. I hope you got all that. This UV resin hasn't actually been cured yet. I'm going to glue this to the torso to let the UV resin level off at the right level and then cure it. And that's when the paint decided to discolor. But hey, it doesn't look that bad. It looks gross, which is good. It's a, a strange slimy monster in a tank. I think the end result's good, if not what I expected. But hey, we're all learning here. And if anybody asks, it's exactly the effect I was going for. Right? Uh, I added a little metal cap to cover the hole at the top and a lovely uh, metal collar to hide that seam, which has kind of made it look a lot better, I think, in my opinion. 
We can always save these projects that go wrong. And for one last piece of this monster slash robot, we're going to use some steel wire bought from the Wilco. And I'm going to use this wire to fashion a tentacle that's uh, slivering out of one of this robot's many orifices. Well, it's only got one, really, and it's coming out of there. Coating it with cosplay, and I've made three claws out of the translucent female. And if you've been crafting as long as I can, you can actually control your body temperature to bake small bits of clay in your grip, uh, like so. I press the baked claws into place, but then I remove them uh, before the painting process because I can just super glue them in afterwards. I'm going to use this wooden dowel. This is a wooden dowel that you've probably got lying around a drawer somewhere from Ikea, no doubt. And I use this for texture, running it up and down the arm or the tentacle over and over again. And it works pretty well. I painted it off screen because it's the same as the head, same colors, same techniques. And uh, the last thing is this lever effect Fimo. I'm going to give this a go, never used this before. I'm going to use this as a tight seal at the end of the tentacle as it's attached to the robot. Let's see how it looks. The Fimo did bobble up a little bit, it's a bit bumpy. I don't know if that's because I heated it too closely or too much, but it, it looks good. Uh, I'm going to use this drill to drill a hole and uh, slot the tentacle in. As a final touch, I'm going to name this robot beast fittingly. And uh, just to remind you that if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and uh, if you wish to support the channel, please join the Patreon. Uh, uh, you'll be very welcome. Here is the showcase. Thank you very much. That video was a lot of work. It took me a while to do that video. That's why this video is a little bit late, but I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy the video, um, here is candy. If you did enjoy the video, please do consider liking, subscribing, clicking the bell thing. And uh, if, you, if you want to be incredibly generous, you could join the patron. Um, but I don't expect you to do that. I mean, I'd, I'd like it if you did. I mean, I'd love it. I mean, it would make my day, but... Uh, it's, a, it's asking a bit much. This is tantamount to begging. I'm going to cut all this out, unless I forget. Thank you very much for watching.